everybody hey bookers hey readers welcome back to another video with me JK are you subscribed to the family if you're not subscribed to the family because we are literally a stone's throw no not a stone's throw a salt particle away from 30,000 subscribers please do subscribe please do join the family there's going to be a giveaway click that notification bell and also join the membership space I talk a lot about you know personal things that are happening in my life but I also have fun videos here and there for everybody to enjoy so if you're really thinking about joining the membership space I urge you to do so welcome everybody welcome bookers I am going to be sharing my book wrap up over the last two three months I've read about anywhere between 10 and 12 books and I don't know how I did it I can tell you that for free like catch me outside I don't even know how I did it on top of work and school and recording and life okay I don't know how I did it but I managed to do it so I'm gonna share with you let me put my phone down chair I'm gonna share with you some of the books that I've been reading it's going to be a long video there's a lot of books to get through but let's get into it some of them are audio books most of them are physical copies Copies, which I've got here with me let's get started with the first book the first book is this one by Emily Henry and this is you and me on vacation otherwise known as the people we meet on vacation in certain parts of the world this follows Alex and Poppy it's more so from Poppy's perspective and it is a dual time span Poppy and Alex are friends and we get their story in the current in the now and we also get their story when they met when they were college friends so they've been friends their whole lives up and until now we get to know how they met we get to know their families we get to know their relationship to one another as friends and essentially it's a romance story that I really loved because it wasn't smutty or you know there was it's, there was just not that many cringe moments it was grown up and adult and mature um, even though the trope of friends to lovers for me I was just like I don't understand how you're friends all these years and no one ever said anything about how they felt and it's probably one of the reasons why I gave it I think a three and a half out of five I just felt like that's a little bit impractical but it follows Pop Poppy and Alex and Poppy is a writer is a travel blogger creator content person and writer for this really fancy uh, magazine and Alex is a teacher and they made a pact when they were in college that every summer they would go on holiday together they would take a vacation together whether they're with people whether they're single it doesn't matter poppy is more you know outward she's fresh she's vibey she's hip she's fun she's exciting and alex is more reserved laid back um, more serious about relationships you know poppy just dates and hey man it'd be like that sometimes and they go on this one trip to croatia and it changes everything in their friendship it changes everything so much so that they hardly speak now and poppy gets this really great trip with work and she says you know what i'm saying listen i'm gonna try one more time for all time's sake i'm gonna try one more time to invite alex on this trip and hopefully we can save our friendship and that's basically what the story surrounds itself with and you kind of follow the lovers friends to lovers trope and it's really really a great story very light something that you can read very quickly um but i loved the rapport that they have together i love the description of the vacations that they went on um i really enjoyed the book i didn't think it was something that deserved a four out of five or five out of five but i did think it was a good time so i rated it a three and a half out of five really really enjoyed it and if you're somebody who loves emily henry definitely this is this is a good one this is a good one the next book that i read is the stationary show by Marjan Kamali and this book it's a romance novel these are not in the order that I read them I'm literally just pulling them out as I go but this one is following the life of Roya and Balman and Roya and Balman are uh, born in Iran 
Tehran more specifically, and they meet and they fall in love when they're 17 years old. Roya is into books and writing and poetry and she loves Rumi and so on and so forth. And there's a stationery shop that she goes into almost every afternoon after school to just read and just get away from the political stresses, issues, the turmoil that's happening in the country. And one day she meets Bauman in this bookshop. Bauman, I keep saying Bauman, Bauman, Bauman. I don't know how to say it and I apologize if I'm saying it incorrectly, but it revolves around their lives. It's also a dual time span to where Roya is now, elderly in her 60s or 70s, and it takes us back from this the now to the to the um past how she meets Baman and how they develop a friendship and then a relationship but then because of life and the political turmoil and unrest in the country Roya ends up moving to the states but there's always been that lingering thing that one time she was supposed to meet Baman in one of the squares and he didn't come and at that point he had said that listen I'm going to marry you I want to be with you this is what I want for us and he didn't come and so all her life even though she went and she married another man and you know she lived her life she's always been wondering why why did you do that to me and she reconnects with him when she's older and you get the answers to all those questions and it's just beautiful on so many levels it's a beautiful book it's impeccably written the atmosphere you feel it you feel the tenseness of the situation when they're in Tehran and you feel how you know as much as she's lived her life and she's now older and she lives a relatively good life with a great husband and all of that but there's still that nagging thing in her that just wants all these answers to all these questions and eventually she meets him when she's older and he answers all her questions and wow one of the best ones I pretty pretty much think that that one is gonna land up in my top 10 I can tell you that for all free right and then we have these two babies let's put them this way we have these two babies black girls must die exhausted and black girls must be magic and this is um, these are two books by Jane Allen, part of a trilogy of books. So the third one is coming. It's on its way, child. It's on its way. Am I excited? Yes, I am, child. Uh, but the first one is Black Girls Must Die Exhausted. The covers are in... They're just... Sweetie, don't focus on me. The covers, okay? The covers, okay? Okay, um, so this one follows, so both stories, this is a continuation of this one, and it follows the life of Tabitha Walker, a successful, well-driven, ambitious, just living a good life, young woman who is a reporter for KWTV or something like that, and um, it follows her life and how great her life is going until one day she goes for a doctor's visit and she realizes that, uh something is happening that could alter the course of her life forever and it involves having a child or not mm, mm. so now she has to deal with this uh potentially altering life decision that she needs to make and it follows her life follows the life of her friends you know just black girl magic okay her friends lexi and laila and her uh, boyfriend mark and it just follows the trials tribulations that she goes through what i love about this book it also speaks to a lot of social justice issues like um you know the black black people and uh black men dying at the hands of police officers it speaks to things like that it speaks to a being a black professional in a largely white dominated industry a black female professional in a largely dominated white industry and it's just beautiful it's much longer than the second one this one is about 340 pages this one is about 250 pages but this one is the one that stood out for me it was brilliant i loved it so much it spoke to me so much i could relate with so much of the things that she was saying in it um it really really did speak to me and i love this one i think i really i rated this one a five out of five i loved it i loved it and then this one 
I enjoyed it's a continuation of her story and in this one she is pregnant and again follows her life the life of her friends how she's coping and dealing with her pregnancy her relationship with Mark or lack thereof or whatever is going on there and you just follow her life and this time around the social issue that's spoken around is hair and kinky hair and being a black woman and a black professional in the industry that she's in and the judgments on her hair and um i really enjoyed that i really really enjoyed that uh but i didn't feel like it stood out like the first one did so i gave this i think a three and a half out of five if i'm not mistaken but it was a good time and i cannot wait to read the third one so the sweet. next one is sweet bean paste oh lord this is oh man oh man this is such a beautiful book this follows the life of centauro whose life has kind of gone badly right so the story opens oh sweet bean paste by durian sukigawa who is a japanese author and has been translated into english i'm really enjoying translated works quite a bit and um this one follows the life of centauro whose life wasn't the greatest and he wasn't really you know it didn't go in the best way but it opens with him running this bakery store that sells doriyaki which is a pastry that is filled with sweet bean paste and so Centaro is living his life really a rather mundane life the shop is not really doing that well either and he's worried because there's certain reasons why the shop needs to do well um which I can't say that would be a spoiler but then he meets this lady who keeps coming over over to the shop and standing across the street all day every day and he's thinking granny what's going on this lady is in her 60s or 70s and she just stands there and she she just looks into his shop every day and then one day she walks in and she says i'd like to work here and he's like uh yeah no granny you're looking kind of weird what's going on you know um but eventually she does work there and it follows quietly it's just a really great character description and it just un unveils the life of Centaro and Takue and the relationship that they build with each other and Takue's story as well and I loved it I don't think it'll make it in the top 10 but man I had a good time reading this and I was reading it while I was listening to the audiobook as well which made me read it quite fast and whew, mwah, it was beautiful. beautiful and then the next book is Luster. Luster I've spoken about quite a bit in one of my vlogs where I literally gave a full review of Luster so I'm not going to get into it so much. Luster follows Edie. Edie is a 20 something year old who lives in New York and she lives in this tiny matchbox apartment with her roommate who she doesn't really get along with or whatever but hey we hey ho you know we live together and uh, she lives with her roommate the end she works for a publishing company dead end job really doesn't enjoy it has a lot of just traumas from her childhood and because of that she lives a rather provocative lifestyle where she changes partners all the time and this and that and the other but this story follows Edie and the relationship that she gets into with Eric. Edie is a black woman and Eric is a white middle-aged white man who is married and is an open marriage is in an open marriage so the wife knows about Edie. The kicker of this is for me what made it stand out for me is that at some point she ends up living with them. Edie ends up living with them and developing a relationship with the black adopted daughter that they have. And then you start seeing all the, you know, it's just so transcendent for me because I feel like we haven't read a story like this. And for this to be a debut novel, I was just like, wow, sister wow well done raven well done and it speaks to a lot of social justice issues i mean white parents to an adoptive black daughter and the struggles that she goes through with her friends at school and her hair and her body and all of those kinds of things and having edie in the house a black woman helping her get through all of those struggles helping the white parents kind of parent this younger girl girl it's a great book all I know is that I loved it and I highly, highly recommend it. It's written so, so well. I loved this book. Get it? I rated it a 5 out of 5. I'm pretty sure I did.
pretty sure I did. The next book that I read was Piranesi, and Piranesi is actually the last book that I read, but I... I don't want to talk too much on this book. The reason why I don't want to do it is because I will be giving stuff away. In this book, we follow Piranesi. 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 We follow Piranesi. It's by Susanna Clark. And Piranesi is living in this world where he calls this world the house. So he's living in this house, right? That doesn't have really a roof. And there's a lot of chambers and vestibules and corridors and staircases and the northern halls and the southern halls east and western halls all that kind of stuff and he lives in there alone the only other person that he sees there is the other he refers to this person as the other and the other has given piranesi the name of piranesi because he just chose to do so. But Piranesi knows that that's not my name because there's certain things that keep coming into his memory every now and again that are just like, why am I thinking of university? Why am I thinking of this? Why am I thinking of this? But he doesn't remember and doesn't recall any of these things and he doesn't recall how he came to even inhibit that space. That's all I'm going to share. Honestly, the first 30 to 50 pages, I'm just like, what? Halls, vestibules, antechambers, statues, what? What's going on? And then the book goes boof. And then it's just like, <laughs> I love Piranesi. Not only the book, but I just love Piranesi, the character. He is, I just want to give him a hug and envelop him and say, you are a good person. You're a good human. And we need more people like you. And this, ah. Oh. Definitely making it into the top 10. I love this book. I love this book. I, this is the book that you don't borrow people. You would rather buy them, the book. And I got this at Bargain Books, okay? For about 240 bucks, something like that. Another book that is probably gonna make it into the top two of my year, The Secret Life of Church Ladies by Disha Pilar. Pilar? Pilar? I don't know how to say her surname, and I'm so sorry if I'm butchering it, but this is a short story collection of the secret lives of church ladies. Is it, It's exactly what it says it is. So you can imagine the title in itself has you going, girl, which one is this one, right? You get excited about it, right? And it follows the lives of church ladies outside of the walls of the church, the relationships that they have with their partners, their extramarital affairs, the, 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 you know, sexuality, you know, how they can't really talk about their sexuality in the church and towards other people and whatever, but the lives that they live behind closed doors. My goodness, some of my favorite stories were, let's see how many stories are here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Some of my favorite stories were Eula, Peach Cobbler, Snowfall, How to Make Love to a Physicist, and Instructions for Married Christian Husbands. And let, honey, let me tell you, if there's one book that I could recommend that you get, get it. Get it, it is so enthralling. It's beautiful. I read it while I listened to it at the same time. I highlighted, I, ah, oh, mwah, mwah, chef's kiss. This is so, so good, so, so good. And then the oh. next book that I read was uh, The Mothers by Britt Bennett. I mean, do we not know how great Britt Britt Bennett is The Vanishing Half, anybody, Stella and Desiree? Yes. So this one follows Nadia Turner, who has just gone through, um, she's a 17 year old, I think at the time, and she's just gone through the loss of her mother. Now there's a lot of trigger warnings in this book that I really do recommend that you look up um, when it comes to like abuse, when it comes to grief, when it comes to suicide, there's a lot that I really recommend that you read up on before you read the book. But it follows the life of Nadia Turner after having just lost her mother to suicide and the relationship <clears throat> that she has with her father going forward and how difficult and tumultuous it is and the relationship with the church the mothers are the women of the church the women who pray uh, for the people of the church who send through messages and the women pray for them and the mothers have always kind of had their eye on Nadia Turner and what's happened to her so essentially she takes up with the pastor's son, Luke Shepherd, and they have 
stuff happens with them and um, so the story revolves around the life of Nadia Turner with Luke Shepard and Aubrey another character who happens to be Nadia's very good friend and how their lives interchange and intertwine with one another's um, you know love lost love gained um, just a relationship between a father and a daughter it's beautiful <sighs> lovely i enjoyed it i did not rate it a five out of five this time around i said four out of five but still stood out quite a bit to me is uh, if we were villains now if you do not like shakespeare don't get this book i'm gonna tell you right now because it's gonna drive you up the wall with all the phrases and passages of shakespeare that are in this book this is a i'd like to say a mystery that is highly influenced by the secret history by donna tart which i have there um the author ml rio says in her interviews that she was highly highly influenced by the secret history and it follows seven friends who you know study in this theatrical school and they're theater students and they're very you know just fancy and they talk in Shakespearean and they do Shakespearean plays and you know it's very dark academia candles books notepads everywhere really really great book it opens with one of the friends Oliver who's just about to be released from prison he spent 10 years in prison 10 years in prison excuse me he spent 10 years in prison for the murder of his friend one of the friends but the detective who was handling that case 10 years ago meets up with Oliver 10 years later just before just after he's released and says I know you didn't do it something about that case wasn't right talk me through it let's talk about it and that's how you start to discover the friendships, the atmosphere. It's not very heavy on the plot, but the atmosphere, the different friends that they have, loved Alexandra, hated Richard, um, you know, uh, Pip and all the other friends. Really, really, Ren, I loved it. I loved it. I really enjoyed it. I rated it a five out of five. I really enjoyed it. I loved it. I loved it. Big time. And then the other books that I read were all audio books. The first one was um, The Perfect Child by Lucinda Berry. And if you are interested in st stories with crazy kids, you better read that. You better read that story. This follows, as I was saying, that follows the life of Hannah and her husband. And if you want to read a story, a fast paced thriller that is so enthralling, you're not going to put it down. You're not going to stop reading it. Lucinda Berry's The Perfect Child is amazing. So this kid comes into the hospital where Hannah works. Hannah is a nurse and her husband also works at the same hospital as an orthopedic surgeon. This child comes into the hospital. They're assuming that the child is around three years old. Just bruised and battered. This kid has been beaten. Beaten. Do you understand what I'm saying? Bones are broken and all of this. And the husband, I forget his name, um, is assigned to be the doctor who operates on this child and as he does he spends a lot of time with the kid comes in to see her check on her and falls in love with this child just completely falls in love with this child introduces his wife to this child and um, they have been married for a few years and they went through a difficult time with a miscarriage they fall in ir ir irrevocably in love with this child and as they do and they realize that um, we want to adopt this child. So the book is taking three point of views. It's taking the wife's point of view, the husband's point of view, the social worker's point of view. Why there's a social worker? It's because somebody dies. Okay? It's because somebody dies. So as soon as this kid comes into the lives of these parents, shit goes down. You better catch me outside. This kid is crazy. This kid is crazy. Okay, and uh, so the mother doesn't have a great relationship with this kid. In fact, this kid just loves the dad, yo. This kid just loves the surgeon. She, uh, this kid don't care a thing about the mother, okay? Doesn't care at all. And uh, very strange things start happening until it results in the death of somebody. That is, that's all I'm going to say. Great thriller. Fast-paced. 
Uh, Lucinda Berry is, I think, a clinical psychologist by trait. And uh, so there was a lot that you could see, like, you know, psychologically in the mind of the kid. It was written really, really well. I loved it. And I really do highly recommend that you read it. I really loved it. I think I rated it a 5 out of 5. I really loved it. The next one that I read was Stolen Tongues by Felix Blackwell. Now, this is a horror very short uh, novel and I listened to it on script it's gonna be right here and this one I even forgot the name of the wife the husband's name is Felix and the prologue of this book is the one that had me go what it's going on so husband and wife book kicks off husband and wife uh, go to a cabin in the woods. This cabin is owned by the wife's family. They go there for just a holiday. You know, it's winter time. They want to go there, just be away from the world, relax, have a good time. They get there. Everything goes swimmingly well until at night, a few nights in, at night they start hearing things. You know what I'm saying? They start hearing footsteps outside the doors and the windows and they start hearing people talking in the distance. I mean, it is snowing, okay? It is snowing. There is no way there could be people talking in the distance. There's no homes nearby. What's going on? Who are these people? And when they would look out, they wouldn't see a damn thing, okay? But they're hearing things and everything is just kind of crazy until they start hearing these things but what's weird is felix's wife starts responding to these voices that are outside so there's a voice communicating with her and she's responding and then i was just like wait <laughs> i really enjoyed it it is a horror novel it had me at the edge of my seat i read it in two days and i loved it um that's all i'm gonna say there's a very significant uh, number five in this book. The number five is very significant and it was just, it was good. It was really, really and good. And those are the books that I read up until now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have, please do subscribe to the channel. If you've read any of these books, what did you think of them? If you haven't, but you read, you heard about some interesting ones, which ones are you thinking of picking up? I do have a book club. It is on Instagram. It is called Brown Skin Reads, and you can follow it on Instagram. One word, Brown Skin Reads underscore book club, and that is my book club. And we are currently reading a book for September. If you're keen on reading, reading it you can read it with us it is called it's over there chair i'm gonna put it here it's by imbolo mbue and it's called how beautiful we were i believe it's here it's part of our book club read and yeah that's all from me i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you have definitely like subscribe also join the membership space also click that bell so you know every single time i upload and i'll see you in the next video until then sayonara <laughs>